Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapse version of A Dog in Soft Pastel. This piece, as seen in the Artist magazine, is also available as a full-length, real-time tutorial which you can paint along with me step by step. This is available on my Patreon channel. I'll add links in the description below, but if you do enjoy this version here, then please do subscribe here on YouTube. I used the Sienna colour of pastel matte paper for this. For each of my three articles uh, in the Artist magazine, I decided to use three different papers, experiment with three different surfaces. The first one with my cat Morag on velour, this piece on pastel matte, and then there will be a third article to come next month. And for that one, I'm using Fisher 400. But I love pastel matte. It's one of my go-to papers. I use it all the time. It's excellent for this style of working where you're trying to achieve lots of fine detail. It's great for the background work where I want to build up nice solid colours. And then it's also great for the very fine detail which I sometimes like to create in my animal portraits. So I'm still making use of the bigger pastel sticks. You'll see mostly unison pastels popping up here. And then some pastel pencils too, just to work on the softer hairs around the edge of the dog, for example, making very small adjustments here and there. But most of the work is done with the bigger pastel sticks. And if you would like to work along with me on this, I've released the whole series in real time and I've chatted the whole way through it so it gives you the ultimate guidance on this if you'd like to work along with me. You'll literally be able to put down every mark along with me and we'll talk about the colour choices, why I've chosen these colours. So there's a lot of colour theory that has gone into this piece using the complementary colours of blue and orange. And I talk a lot about those colour choices throughout the tutorial as I often choose my colours before I start to paint. And although I might add to that throughout the painting, most of those colours that I pick out at the start do end up getting used. I've got better over the years at choosing my colour palette before I start to paint. And the reason I like to do that, other than the obvious where I'm starting with a, a plan of action, and I don't have to keep stopping then uh, each time I want to pick out a new colour. It, it makes the start of my painting a bit more fluid and a bit less interrupted by having to choose out every single colour. But it also gives me a chance to consider if there are any little colour theory tricks that I can use within the painting. I can take time to consider that before I get distracted by the painting itself. So the key to the colours in this piece is in trying to create the light and shade that we can see on the dog. We've got quite a full side of the dog here that's in shadow. In fact, the majority of the dog is in shadow. And I find that that's always a little bit trickier than when you've got more sunlit areas on the dog. The shadows are usually the difficult part because that's where you need to perhaps bring in some unexpected colours to give that shadow effect. So it's obvious that we're going to see lots of brown earths, orange, yellow tones on this dog. But perhaps it's a little bit less obvious that you might see some blues or blue violets or even greens running through the fur. But that's often what you can expect in the shadow areas when you're creating fur. Try to look for other colours in the photo reference. Sometimes it involves uh, squinting your eyesight, really blurring your vision and, and looking at the image from a distance. You can play with it on Photoshop or any editing software. You can increase the vibrance or the saturation really searching for extra colours, colours that you can enhance or exaggerate in the painting. That's what I like to do. I like to use the colours to exaggerate 
the light and shade that I'm seeing. So for that reason, this was a great photo reference to work with. I photographed Nova, the dog, for this portrait, uh, specifically for my article in the Artist magazine. I really wanted to gather some brilliant photo references to make these three demos from. But little did I realise that Nova actually doesn't like cameras. <laughs> it seemed to make a very happy and confident dog all of a sudden very nervous and yeah, she really doesn't like the camera in her face. So I tried to use the long lens, photograph her from halfway across the beach when she didn't know I was looking at her. It was very tricky to get her lovely personality to come across in this photo reference. And it took me a long time and dozens and dozens of photographs just to get this one pose. So sometimes when I'm creating commissions, I'm working from client photographs. And sometimes that can be a little bit limiting. Although I'm very lucky that I've had so many wonderful client photos to work with over the years. But it is an extra joy when you get to meet the animal, take the photos, really see the personality of the animal come across. Even though this was painted mainly for my demo in the magazine, I also wanted to be able to gift this portrait to Nova's human, my friend. So it was really important to me that I did actually capture Nova's lovely, gentle personality. So sometimes the photo reference that you're working from can really determine how good the portrait's going to be. And that's what I'm always saying to artists who are just starting out in the commission world. Try to be a little bit more fussy about the photo reference that you accept to work from. Sometimes the limitations of the photo reference can really hold you back. So if you're working with client photos, make sure that you discuss with the client um, what, what elements of the animal's personality they really want to see in the painting. And then make sure that the photo references you're working from actually reflect that. So you've got to have a little bit of quality control for yourself. For your own sanity, I think, when you're doing pet portraits. You don't have to say yes to every job. Sometimes you have to try and advise your clients, try and squeeze better photo reference out of them if that's possible. Try to avoid just saying yes to the first photo that they give you, unless that photo is fantastic, of course. But if a client is choosing you to create this special portrait from them, then it's okay to work with them, have them as part of the process, but really make it clear what you need from the photo reference. So it was lovely to get out and photograph a dog for a portrait again. I haven't been doing that as much recently, so this was great fun to get out on the beach and really trying to compose an image using the viewfinder on the camera. I love doing that. I love doing that for all of my work. And it's especially nice when you get to plan a piece from the ground up. So lots of colour going on this shadow side of the face. This is where I really use the colour to create that magical 3D effect that you can get in a painting. And it really comes from my use of colour here. Saving the brightest whites for the left side of the dog where she's really catching the sunlight. So as I said, the links in my description will take you to the full length tutorial of this and you'll get to see all of this in real time. You'll get the full colour list and of course the high resolution reference image download. And in fact for this project, as I do with lots of my projects, I have released 
lots of different photographs of Nova, which means you can paint your own version of Nova in a different composition, but still make use of the tutorial as guidance for that. So I like to give my patrons that option a lot of the time. You can work along with the exact same image as me, but then I also try to release other images so that you can choose to do your own painting, but that you'll still have lots of help using my tutorial. So if you do decide to paint along with me on this one and you share it anywhere, then I'd love to see all of your different versions of Nova. Please do tag me if you decide to work along. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this speedy version here on YouTube. Please do subscribe here on YouTube, that helps me out so much. And then if you're interested in my full library of longer real-time tutorials, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. And you can now browse my full tutorials library at emmacolbertart.com. But thank you very much for watching this here. And until next time, happy pastling.